Just the way you planned It's funny, but the bells don't ring Musical comedy accounted for about 50% of, of the popular songs that, that the whole country knew. I grew up in a tradition of listening to a lot of that, as well as listening to all the Saturday afternoon broadcasts of the Met. As a matter of fact, when I was in high school, I had a I had a, a picture of Lada Lehmann as the marshalin at one end of, of my bureau and a picture of Gertrude Lawrence uh, at the other end of my bureau. And I thought if I ever ran away from home, I'd run away to one of these two women. I wasn't sure which. I, not for a second realizing the, symb the, the symbolism that, of that. But uh, so I guess it's a long-winded way of saying that I've just always been attracted in both directions. West Side Story opened, and I was at the party, and I was trying to get a drink, and it was like five deep at the bar, and this little short man was standing in front of me and saw my dilemma. He said, what do you want, and I'll, and I'll get it when I get mine. So he, he got me a drink, and we talked, and he turned out to be the pianist for West Side Story. And, uh, we kept up a, a occasional uh, conversation over the year, and then he had to leave, and he needed a sub, and he asked me if I would be interested, and so I said yes, and I just said yes a lot in those days, and so for three weeks I was playing in the pit of West Side Story. I need is one good break, just one good break. If I had been more aggressive and had been able to get my own drink at the opening night of West Side Story, I would never have had a career because everything stemmed from that. I've always thought there were two reasons to write for the theater. One is to write what you love, and the other is for money. And they're both perfectly respectable as long as you know the difference. I think the things that attracted us to any piece of material was, was its theatricality. Uh, I don't think we ever set out to do good deeds. I think we. Uh, you feel, you feel strongly politically about something or about human rights or about the things that these, uh, these pieces are discussing. But when Fred came up, Fred said, Kiss of the Spider Woman. He just said the title, and I said yes. And we got on the phone. The next person we spoke to was Hal Prince, and we simply said the title, and Hal said yes. And it wasn't because it's tangential, but it wasn't because, oh, this great message for the world, or it, it was because it was immediately theatrical. What could be more theatrical than a story, and musically theatrical, than a story that half of which takes place in somebody's mind summoning up movies in a, in, in a, 
in contrast to the grim atmosphere in which he's, leave, he's li living. Uh, that, all three of us saw the possibilities of that immediately. And, uh, and when you look back on it now or, or say it, 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 it's quite clear why Kiss the Spider Woman would be a, an attractive thing to, set, to do, deal with musically. But at that, whenever we told anybody what we were working on, they thought we were just crazy. Uh, I can remember when we were writing Cabaret, and um, when you talk to people about the subject, they thought, uh, that's really not a good idea. And I, there was, I don't remember reviews very often, but there's one line in the Variety Review for Cabaret, which I will always remember. It said, it is unlikely there will be much of an audience for this sort of thing. I used to have this girlfriend known as Elsie With whom I shared four sordid rooms in Chelsea She wasn't what you'd call a blushing flower As a matter of fact, she rented by the hour The day she died, the neighbors came to snicker hmm, That's what comes from too much pills and liquor But when I saw her laid out like a queen she was the happiest corpse I'd ever seen. I think of Elsie to this very day. I remember how she turned to me and said, What good is sitting alone in your room? Come hear the music play. Life is a cabaret, old chum. Come to the cabaret. When Fred and I were starting out, and Jerry and uh, Jerry Bach and Sheldon Harnick were already established, and Steve Sondheim was just starting, and Jerry Herman had just started. We were all allowed to fail. We. Uh, uh, that's something I've said often. We, brought, we, we were part of a generation where there was so much being done that if, uh, if, if people thought you were talented, the chances are they would listen to your work and maybe hire you. Uh, that's, it's so much more difficult now. Theater is so expensive to produce that uh, the only advice I can I, I can have for anybody is if you really love something, if you have your passions are what sustain you through through life, and you just have to find some way to survive uh, to support your passions. All I can say is if if you love something, don't let go of it. Life is what you do while you're waiting to die. Life is how the time goes by. Life is where you wait while you're waiting to leave. Life is where you grin 